Oh, you want to hear a mushroom joke? There's not much room left back on that trolley. <laughs> Rule number one, clean everything. What's up everyone? Russell here again from Aussie Mushroom Supplies and I banged the bench with my ring. All right. Night. Today we're doing cold pasteurization. This is probably one of the easiest techs you can do. All you need is some builder's lime, not garden lime, containers to soak your material in. Something like sugar cane mulch that you can get from anywhere easily, like Bunnings or wherever. So uh, let's go. So we're gonna start with our small bucket. This is optional. We've made one for the material to go in so we can submerge it. That way it's easy to strain and stuff later on. Five grams of lime per liter of water. So if we use six litres of water, we're going to need six times five is 30. So we're going to need 30 grams of lime roughly. You don't, it's not rocket science, you don't have to be exact. So if you're a bit over, a bit under, it should be fine. That's way too much. That's fine. Easy. Half to two thirds fill this with water. Oh geez. Ooh, shower. So make sure you don't fill your bucket up all the way, but your sugar cane is gonna make it go. All right, that's probably about two thirds full. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna fill this up with our sugar cane mulch and we're gonna soak it overnight. We've got some holes in the bottom just to make sure any excess water when we're straining later does strain away. We're trying to stick with this now because it's already sort of fairly small and it's less work and it's easier. So sugar cane mulch, pretty good stuff to start with. Let this submerge in the water. I'll double check it to make sure we don't need any more water. So while we've got our little bucket soaking, we get to fill up an esky as well. It doesn't matter what size the vessel, pretty much anything you've got lying around the house, you can use it in this kind of cold soaking method. All right, so uh, let's get this giant esky loaded up with our sugar cane melts. So we're just gonna let that soak overnight and then we'll probably check on it later on just to make sure it's sort of all underwater. But yeah, simple. All right, so with our little bucket, we're just gonna have a quick check. The material's soaked up all the water, so we have to top up the water a little bit. So all we're gonna do is take the top bucket out a bit, just add a little bit more water. I won't add too much, because we'll let it soak up again and come back to it. But keep keep reading until the material's underwater. All right, so it's been about 24 hours roughly since we started our cold soak. We're gonna pull it out onto these racks to dry. So we're just gonna give the, the racks a quick spray first with isoprol just to make sure there's nothing on there. A simple quick little thing like this can be the difference in success or failure. As you're going, squeeze out as much moisture as you can because it's gonna cut down your drying time a lot. Okay, we're gonna let that strain for four to five hours roughly, and then we're gonna bag it all up with some spawn. Back to our bucket. So, we, every couple of hours, during the day obviously, we just sort of made sure it was underwater. All we've got to do now is strain it. Pull this bucket out. I'll let the bulk of it drain out before I move it. All right, so there's a couple of different ways to do it. I can just tip this bucket out. Leave it in here to finish straining. There is plenty of air space in there. Just let it strain like that with the lid off. Somewhere obviously clean. Or I can clean off a bench and pour it on the bench to spread it out so it'll dry out quicker. Clean the bench first before we obviously put stuff on there. So quick spray with isoprol. I'll let that dry for a few seconds. 
We've got our little sugar cane castle. And we're just gonna try and spread this all out in a sort of a nice even pile, just so it can air out for a few hours and all that excess moisture will disappear. The biggest thing with these sorts of cold pasteurization is making sure your substrate's not too wet. So make it all nice and fluffy. Now that it's all a nice even layer, we're gonna let it air out for a few hours and we'll come back and add some spawn. See you shortly. We're back with our little bucket. Let's add the spawn, mix it through evenly and refill our bucket. And that's it. Our sugar cane's been straining for about five or six hours now. It's feeling sort of fairly dry on the outside now, so we're ready to bag it up. The most important thing with this kind of cold soaking is it needs to be dry enough before you bag it. Too much water content, and it's gonna stop things growing properly and encourage bad things to grow. Maybe I'll do a shelf at a time. So what we're doing is just spreading it out on the bench and then we're going to add the spawn to it, mix it all through and then bag it up. And don't forget the most important thing with low tech mushroom growing, the more spawn, the less trouble you're going to have. We've got our Aussie mushroom supplies, biodegradable straw log bags. Number one rule with low-tech mushroom going, don't go light on the spawn. Our spawn's probably the best you can get. Grow the quickest and the furthest out of any other type. Do we have another zip tie? Happy days. All right, so our Esky gave us three big fruiting bags. We, did, we probably used almost a full bag of spawn, but they should grow very quickly and we should get a lot of mushrooms. All right, guys, it has been 15 days since we inoculated our cold soaked sugar cane. You can see what some little blobs starting to form, so our mushrooms are ready to go. They're all Nice and white all over. There's no other random colors, so it's all good, no contamination. Let's go get these chucked in our fruit container. Now, a lot of you might have heard me repeat myself a lot of times during that video, but they're the important bits you've got to make sure you take in. Number one, clean everything nice and clean, isoprolate. Number two, five grams of lime per liter of water, builder's lime, not garden lime. Number three, Soak for 24 to 28 hours. Number one again, make sure you strain for long enough and your sugar cane, straw, whatever material you're using is not too wet before spawning and bagging. Number one again, use lots of spawn, 10% by weight. You need to use plenty of spawn to make sure your mushroom fungus outcompetes any possible problems you have. Lastly, very, very, very important, incubate your bags under 20 degrees. If it goes over 20 degrees, you have lots of heat build up and lots of problems. So super important that you keep your temperatures under 20 degrees. We've got lots of number ones because they're all so important. Thanks and good luck.
yeah. Thanks for watching. If there's anything else you want to learn, drop us a comment down below. Don't forget to smash that bell, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you later. And don't forget to smash that bell over there. Or is it over there? Is it there? There? Where's that bell? <laughs> <laughs>